Now, it's uh, almost 50 years since Ugandan President Idi Amin ordered 70,000 South Asians to leave the country within three months. The announcement led to widespread violence and fear. Many came to Britain, a large number settled in Leicester. They arrived with just one suitcase and a few pounds in their pockets. Rajiv Popat has been hearing from those who were affected, and we start his series of reports with an exclusive interview with a woman whose husband was kidnapped in 1972. It's a heartbreaking story, and you'll hear graphic details of some of the horrors faced by people during that time. For Manjula Ben Suchdev, praying at the Jalaram Temple in Leicester gives her a sense of peace. It's almost 50 years to the day since her husband Amrit Lal was kidnapped by soldiers in the town of Kabra in Uganda, a country that was ruled by a brutal and ruthless president, Idi Amin. Mrs Suchdev, who was 33 at the time, was at home with her family when the troops burst in demanding cash. They locked my mom and dad and sister in a room and my brothers were forced to lie face down on the floor. They made us open the safe. When they got what they wanted, they bundled my husband into a boot of a car. We were really scared. We were shaking with fear. Whatever they wanted us to do, we did it. The soldiers left with the cash and Mr Suchdev. That was the last time he was seen by his family. I was just too frightened. I couldn't even speak after that. I was in so much shock. The only thing I could do is pray. I was speechless. Just a few days earlier, Idi Amin had made an order that turned lives upside down. He gave Asians just three months to leave the country, or face being sent to a military camp or worse. The reason? Asians have kept themselves apart as a closed community. They have been milking the economy of the country. Panic and fear spread quickly. Amin's warning was taken seriously. Each day, long queues formed outside the British High Commission in the capital Kampala for permits to enter the UK. Are you one of the people who will have to go because of what President Amin yeah. said? Yeah, I'm one of them. I'm holding British protected passport. I came here to see what is happening because I'm holding British passport and I may get in trouble. Will you have to leave because of what the President has said? If uh, he say I have to leave, what I can do? Maz Mushru is an internationally renowned photographer based in Leicester. He says he'll never forget the horrific scenes of violence he witnessed soon after the announcement. Mr Mushru worked for a Ugandan newspaper and a photographer for the army. He remembers clearly what happened to a group of officials who were believed to oppose Idi Amin. They were led blindfolded to a lake full of crocodiles. Their hands were tied behind their backs. They had to run into the water. If you, if you run backwards, we'll kill you. And they killed those peoples and there were dead bodies into that Lake Kyoga, which was the drinking water. And the district commissioner rings me up in the morning to go and photograph the evidence of the dead bodies. He had met the dictator several times. He says Amin was unpredictable and could change his mind in an instant. He believes he may have unwittingly upset the dictator or his generals because he discovered he was on a hit list. Fleeing the country became a priority. One evening, one of the army personnel came and told my wife that if I had not left that evening, Next morning, they were coming for my life. I actually had guns on my sort of chest about four or five times. I survived everyone. Meanwhile, Mrs. Suchdev was now in a desperate situation. Amin's 90-day clock was ticking, but her husband was missing and her parents knew they had to leave with all of their children. I didn't want to leave. How could I? My husband wasn't with me. 
I told my mother and father I would stay on, but they said there was no way they would leave me on my own in Uganda. It was far too dangerous. Mrs. Suchdev told me although she's realistic about the chances of finding her husband alive, she clings on to the hope of being reunited with him one day. My mind says he will come back. I sometimes believe it, but after 50 years, of course, it's difficult to remain positive. It still hurts, it's painful, but what can I do? It's out of my hands now. To this day, I still have no idea what happened to him. I think about my husband all the time. I'll never forget him. Rajiv Poppet, ITV News, Leicester.